art. I say this because I belong uh, with the creative industry and I have seen people, talent, that have wasted due to drugs or drug abuse or alcohol abuse uh, or addiction. And I always say that if only they were not addicted to these drugs or these uh, drinks or, you know, certain substances, they would have gotten very far, gone international, put Ghana on the map. But unfortunately, sometimes their career is cut short. It can go as far as their lives getting cut short. Let's look at somebody like Kiki John, very talented man. But what happened to him? We have seen or heard people like Konfu Kwade who have spoken about their story. Timothy Bentum, once a drug addict, now a pastor, God saved him and others. Today we are delving into that conversation and I'm excited about it. The documentary is out there. Kwame Dazi put this together and Kwame Dazi is our very own man who hosts Showbiz A to Z. And he's actually a very good pundit, trust me on it. And when he goes on social media, he dissects the topic. And so we say God bless Kwambe Dazi for putting this together. And we have our very own Ochiame Kwame. This man is a seasoned musician. He's been consistent. And you ask yourself, why has he not gotten addicted? Or why is he not doing drugs? But any time he holds the microphone, he delivers. Today he'll tell us all about that. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you, you Rosling. How are you? We're doing well. It's good to have you here. It's the dress. It's a dress for the you. The dress. Ooh, I should give you a 360. The dress is dress. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you. And um, this particular documentary is a documentary that probably I've been wanting it for a very long time. Uh -huh. um, I didn't put this together, but this is always a saying that if you don't do it, God will let somebody else do it. And God chose Kwame Darcy to do this. And so I'm excited. Growing up, the likes of Kiki Jan. Yeah. We loved him until his life got wasted away. I want to stick to Ghana because even when I go abroad, it's even worse. Yeah. You know, so we stick to Ghana. Kofu Kwade was in GSS with him. Oh, wow. Matters of Uganda. Oh, wow. What? Same thing. So much talent. And it got wasted away. So you ask yourself, what is getting them into this? But the first question I have to talk to you about is why you decided to put together this documentary for me. I think your introduction sets the basis for my inspiration, actually. So you mentioned a number of people. Even when we go outside the country from Whitney Houston to Michael Jackson, Johnny Depp and all those people, we come home to Kiki Jan, Lord Kenya, Baktai, JD, Konfo Kwade, Majid Michel mm. was also into it. Right. Timothy Bentum and other people. So last year, there was this issue about Red Eye of Tut of Fame who had left his house. He was working somewhere in Tema in some ghettos. And according to um, one media person called Emmanuel Ajimai, he, he was like, the, the gentleman was into drugs because the people around that area had monitored him and, and they, they saw what he was going through. Mm -hmm. So he went there to save the situation. He took him to a rehab center in Achimota called Chosen Rehab. Okay. I spoke to them in the documentary. Yeah, I think I saw the yeah. documentary. So after that, we were having a production meeting. I, myself, and uh, Philip and I, thinking about what to do for radio discussion. And so we did a bit of that on radio, mm -hmm. Showbiz HZ. Then later, we thought about doing a documentary, put things together proper for other people to learn lessons mm -hmm. from it. Because this documentary is to tell people about the dangers of involving in drug use and how to also get uh, healed or get out of it if you are already into it. So basically, these are our inspirations for putting together the documentary. I like that you've done it. And uh, what's the feedback like so far? Awesome. I've heard so many people, some who were into it, especially mm. those who got in and came out. Like, oh, Charlie, this is a great initiative because most of them were looking for platforms to amplify this particular um, topic. So having us do this, Thank you. especially in the media space, this is our contribution to shaping society. Mm -hmm. So they are happy about it. Mm. Now, I'll come to Ochami Kwame, but I mean, talking about 
you having to have a conversation with most of them. Yeah. Um, I want to know what actually will be the, the same story that you keep hearing that got them into it. But Ochami, you have been in this industry for how many years? 26 More than, years. 26 years. Yeah. Wow. Almost three decades. Wow. Yes. You've been consistent. Thank you. you don't take drugs. At all. How come? I think that I want to thank God for it. The, because for a person to be successful, it is, it is predominantly based on his environment. And I didn't choose my parents. God chose them for me. And so the first reason is to thank God for that. And then the second reason is my father. Mm. So my father used to be general manager of Bacchus Limited okay. in Kumasi when I was growing up. But he never drank alcohol. He never smoked cigarette. He never smoked weed. He, he had BP and all those things. But every time he was taking his medication, he would say that you guys should eat well so that you don't end up to be reliant on mm -hmm. BP medication like because it disturbs kidney and things like that. You know, so it is my father. And even today, as I'm almost 50 years, I can still hear my father's voice play in my head consistently. Mm. When I'm making a decision, there are two or three, three voices in my head. My father's voice, Jesus' voice, and my mother's voice. And then personally myself, I look at this decision I'm taking. If my children grow to find out I did this, mm -hmm. or if the wind uh, blows this action into my children's school, would they be proud of it? These are the four things that I consider. And so, so my father's voice has been in my head all the time. And when I was younger, of course, I grew up in Fantino Town and Ashtown. Mm -hmm. So at a point in my life, I tried weed. Okay. I, you know, as what little you try it? It's friends. So um, it's friends. Everyone, it's experiences. Mm -hmm. I want to find out what Kojo is feeling, why he's so cool, mm -hmm. why he doesn't care. You know, they say that the, there's, there's a substance in marijuana called, this is TV, I can't say it, mm -hmm. called, called effort. Okay. You know, so okay. you're about to become um, homeless, but you just take a puff and F it. Mm. You know, your wife is about divorcing you. Mm. F it. It has a, a certain way of balancing you out and put you on cloud nine in a way that you don't really care about what is happening around you. Right. And it's exciting. So growing up in my teens, I also tried it once, twice, mm -hmm. but it didn't work for me. Okay. When I took it, I became intoxicated. I lost total control. Mm -hmm. A small gutter became like a... A big gutter. A big <laughs> you know, so I said, okay. Okay. It is, this is the thing that makes you guys cool. Plus my father's voice in my head. Mm. Say, I won't do it. That's how come you never touched it again? Yes, that's after, how come I... After two tries. Yes. But what if you had tried it and, you know, you didn't get that kind of experience? Would you have stuck to it? I, I, even if I liked it, I would still not do it because my father's voice is in my head. My father's voice is mm. consistent, even today, today. My, and so I remember my father died 10 years before I went to the university. Okay. But before I became an artist, I had promised my father that no matter what happens, I would at least get a first degree for him. Mm. And because of my dead father's voice in my head, I got a first degree. Okay. You know, so I think it is about touch. It is about companionship. It's about where you are growing up. It's about environment. And because my father's voice is in my head, mm -hmm. and I never saw him drink alcohol or smoke or abuse any drug, I won't do it. You have two other brothers that are also into the, in the same industry. Yes. And uh, none of them do drugs as well? No, no, not at all. Wow. Not at all. My, my brother Stone, mm -hmm. he doesn't even drink. He's just like me. He He's my classmate. At, at alcohol. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah, Stone is all. my classmate. Yeah, I have a lot of classmates. <laughs> yeah, geez, they all went. That's why you are a as well. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I know that Kunta might drink mm -hmm. once in a while, but he doesn't do drugs. Okay. No. Mm. Kwame, yeah? what is the same song that they were singing when you went to have a conversation with them? What got them into the drugs or Friends. the alcohol? Most of them, external influences. Because um, speaking to OJ Black, for example, okay, his was in school. He was 11 years old. Oh. He saw the security people smoke and he got introduced. To By the security man? He, he felt it could, it could taste nice. 
11 year old pupil. Wow. Yes. And then uh, Nasty also in school. Uh, Noah King also in school. So basically, I think it's friendship, peer pressure, if you like, most of them. Mm. Most of them, yeah. But and so from the, the people I spoke to, they actually got into the drug use before they got into show business. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. You know, so for those who got into it, mm. when they entered into showbiz, yeah. it's a different story altogether. Yes. Because for them, you ask yourself, why did they do it? Yeah. Because I, I probably came into showbiz, I knew nothing about alcohol, I knew nothing about drugs, and then somebody in there is introducing me. Why will you be introduced to drugs yeah. just because you're a creative person? Oshami. So they, this is what they say. They say that, you see, once you take alcohol or you take a drug, tram or whatever, once you take it, you lower your inhibitions. It, it automatically lowers your inhibitions. Okay. And once you put your guard down, people pay money to see an artist mm -hmm. do things that they cannot do at home. Flip, roll, jump, express yourself at a certain frequency mm -hmm. that they can. That's why they've paid the money to see it. So before you go on stage, somebody that really likes you, that wants you to excel, mm -hmm. will tell you that take a shot of this or take this pill. Once you take it, your inhibitions will be lowered. And once your inhibitions are lowered, it is just complete expressionism. Mm. Because for an artist, the first cut is the deepest. So I'm on stage. I'm up out the stage. I'll, I'll start my performance in the middle. 15 seconds later, I'll go to the left. Yeah. I'll come back run across, jump, flip, fall down, mm -hmm. do push-ups. Mm -hmm. I'll do all of these things whilst I'm performing. Now, if I have rehearsed that and I get the influence of some pill, that has now lowered my inhibitions. I'm going to do each of those actions times 10. Wow. Then they say, Akwanu wear energy. <laughs> energy right. bar. Exactly. So it's the energy. It is energy. It is the energy that you must share with 7,000 people. Each one of them is drawing from you. So if you stand there without any booster, mm -hmm. you stand there without any uh, influence, mm -hmm. then you are going to be dry because you are spreading this particular energy with 10,000 people, 2,000 people. Each one of them is looking at you. How do you do it? Because you don't take alcohol, you don't take drugs, but you are able to give us the energy. It is because I have come to realize that to be an artist is enough. To be blessed, to be, you know, the most important part of thinking is creative thinking mm -hmm. or solution-oriented thinking. And once God blesses you with the ability to take lyrics and put them into a song, that is enough. You already have that energy. You have all that is required to be able to express yourself like that. You know, so why I don't take it is because I feel grateful for the little that I have been given already. You are going to work with someone here at Joy. Mm -hmm. That person takes 5,000 cities or 200 cities a month. Mm -hmm. You take 10,000. But at the end of the month or midweek through the month, you are going to him for a loan. It is not about how much you have been given. It's about what you do with the little you have been given. So a lot of these ideas and these concepts, they don't introduce it to us as we are kids. Mm. And even if they do, you don't understand. And the, one of the key reasons is that for, a, for an artist, you begin to blossom somewhere around 18, 19. Mm -hmm. For a boy, at 18, 19, your frontal cortex is not fully developed. Your frontal cortex will develop around 25. Right. And it's your frontal cortex that is responsible for analysis. Mm -hmm. It's your frontal cortex that is responsible for good social behavior. So at that time, anybody can catch you and introduce anything to, to you, you if family has not already prepared your prefrontal cortex mm. through love and touch. Wow, I, I think this is really, really wow. deep. So family actually plays a vital role in this. But then there are people that will also say that have come from very good families, very good backgrounds, but they still get themselves yeah. let, let, let me say something yeah. before he comes here. Well, when you say very good backgrounds, what do you mean? There are people, rich children, who are traveling to Dubai, Jamaica, and Cape Town every year, 
but their mother cries all the time. So I've seen the research of the research that if a child's mother is crying all the time, mm. the propensity for that, or is sad all the time, the propensity for that child to grow up and want to abuse drugs to uplift his energy is higher than a child who comes from a happy home. The second most important cause of drug addiction and abuse in the U.S. is fatherlessness. And fatherlessness can mean two things. It can mean a broken home or the father lives in New York. He comes once to yeah. Ghana mm -hmm. and makes his wife pregnant and goes back. So the father is not present, you know. Right. And so a good family, does it mean riches, cars, mm. to live at Trasaco, or to create a feminine, masculine balance that is bubbling with such beautiful energy in the home that their children feel enough that there's no need for them to feel high mm -hmm. because they don't feel low. Mm. I like that. But then there's, there's always that one person that can also convince you. You know, sometimes you are so crazy for the fame. You go on stage, one, it may be your first time, second time. I'll use an example. Fantana, first time on stage, people bashed her. You know, yeah. Jackie, first time on stage, people bashed her. Um, even Sarkodie, first time on stage, he was bashed. So people like that, they are not on drugs. Yeah. But if that person is not as strong as they are, can be influenced because probably they are looking for the fame, they are looking for acceptance, they are looking to be the it. And that has always been mm. their dream. Mm. So if a manager goes to them and says to them, you're not doing well, but if I should give you A, B, C, D, pill, okay. we will get there. They will fall for it. And that doesn't even have the whole family thing, right? Yeah. Family. So uh, yesterday, Rexuma mentioned something about shyness among most creatives. And he was talking about the fact that most of them are shy. So they need something to cover up. So that if they are on stage performing, you would think they are very assertive. So that is one part of it. And also the pressure to deliver. Yeah. So just as you mentioned, the person has been bashed a number of times for not being a good performer. They will tell you, oh, you are slow on stage. You always go on stage and you'll be walking around like, like a snail. So that is where that person might get the influence of taking in drugs. So I agree with you from yeah. that angle that it's also a factor. Mm -hmm. The shyness, the fact that you have been, uh, you're having um, um, pressure from people to behave in a certain way. And also environment, mm -hmm. Rosling. So you are working with all these creatives, all these artists, actors, and almost everybody is doing it. You might be tempted to also do it as well. So who are in your circle of friends? Mm -hmm. A very, very, very important thing. Because Kiki Jan was introduced to drugs mm -hmm. because the people that he was playing with, not, not he was playing with, not the Osibisa people. After Osibisa, the group of people that he found himself with were doing drugs. And that was the beginning of his drug addiction. Because when he was with Osibisa, he wasn't doing drugs. Mm -hmm. And for 21 years, Kiki Jan was, was an addict. 21 years until he passed away in 2004. Yeah. So I think it's a number of factors put together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's really difficult to stand your ground, isn't it, Ochiami? Yeah, it, it is, yeah. especially in your 20s. But if you have passed it in your 30s, no one even comes to, mm. comes to talk to you about it. For, for example, now, I have big boys mm -hmm. that I play with who help me out. Whenever I go to them to have a conversation to learn about real estate or something, they bring a shot of cognac. A chami drink. If you don't drink it, we won't have the conversation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no. So even at my age, yeah. people are always weekly forcing me to take a shot. Mm. You know, and sometimes I have to pick it and pretend I'm drinking it or for diplomacy purposes, which is not authentic, or sometimes I stand my ground and I say, no, no, I, I don't drink alcohol. The, this thing will let me lose focus so that whatever you tell me, I will take it yeah. and become indebted to you. Mm -hmm. You know, so it is difficult. Everywhere you go to, and the society is, is curated in a way that every time you do something great, a drug is being presented to you. So you graduate from school, alcohol. Mm. Okay. You get married alcohol. Every time something important happens to you, 
the society presents you a certain form of poison mm. so that it will balance <laughs> <laughs> it will balance well, the quality your quality of existence some, at, the, at, the, at that point. Some religions, they give babies alcohol during the naming ceremony. Yes, some religions. They, they, they put... Oh, so, they put... So, they put... And so, and so. And so, Exactly. Yeah. You know. Oh, <laughs> but that one is symbolic. It means that if you are going to be hot, be hot. If you are going to be cold, be cold. And so, yes, it's really... But especially in your, in your early 20s, it is truly difficult, but that's why for me, I keep bringing back it back to family. Mm. If the, 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 the family tries their best, because once your child, your, your child is 14 going, and you begin to walk with the child, you take two kilometers walk, three kilometers, four kilometers, you take your son to the gym. What you are doing for the, for the child is building resilience. Right. And once you are building that type of resilience, you are showing the child that life is not always going to be easy. Mm -hmm. But the same way you carry 100 kilos of this one, even though no one has asked you, and you, keep, you push 10 reps, that is the same way you must stand your ground when you are being served alcohol, even without saying. Now, another thing that exercise does for young people mm -hmm. to, that helps them not to take alcohol is that every time you walk, you pick a, or you do some squats, your bones and your muscles produce, produce hope hormones. Okay. Yes. They produce happy hormones, mm -hmm. which is the oxytocin. And if you drink alcohol, the chemical reaction that is happening in your body is mimicking the original dopamine or the original. That's why they call the thing dope. Dope. Exactly. Okay. So your body is producing dopamine. Every time you are doing something you like, when you go next to a so, woman, so it's like, best that you have children exercise. Yes, it's best that if your child does something wrong, you, you, you punish them, not as in beat them. Or you take something away, mm -hmm. and then they are begging, they are crying, they have withdrawal symptoms. You keep your ground. It is best that even today, our children are being introduced to all sorts of addiction, which can later turn into alcoholism or drugs. The tab, the, the phone. Mm. Mm. It is the same concept of getting artificial dopamine, mm -hmm. where original dopamine is passing your exam or learning a trade and knowing how to cut this by this diameter. No, coming on the phone and then staying on TikTok, looking at beautiful girls shake nyash. <laughs> that is the dopamine that your child is getting. Right. And once they grow up, they will live. So it's like a, a cat. It's like a, a, a lion that you buy as a when it comes mm -hmm. home, it's a cat. Mm -hmm. But eventually it will grow and bite you. Mm. So that is how these things are. Wow. Yes. Uh, when you did the you know, documentary, yeah. had a conversation with most of these people, one thing that we noticed was the fact that we don't see females in there. Yeah. Is it that the females are not in, you know, getting addicted or they just didn't want to speak? Which is which? Mm. <laughs> there were a number of them that we thought were into it. They were not willing to speak about it. You see, those who were willing to open up were those who had come out to say they were into it. There were others that we know because we are the industry, mm -hmm. do it, but they can't come out to say it. Because they're still addicted. Yes. Or maybe they are struggling to come out of it, but they don't want people to know that they are into it. So why is it that they do it, but they are scared to let people know they do it? I don't know. It it's also brings... It is because it is illegal. <laughs> <laughs> if they can and, say they, no, you see, they can go to jail. I, yeah. I like that. But it, it's, it it's become... You know, we had a conversation at the back there, and I was saying yeah. that, yes, as much as it's illegal, we are seeing somebody like Kelvin Boy mm -hmm. smoking, you know, in public. It's a fact. I had to mention a name because I have seen it. The videos were out there. He was smoking weed. We've How seen it. How do you it. know it wasn't cigarettes in, paper, in a Rizla? That's it. How do you know that it was weed? Because of the way it was wrapped, isn't it? <laughs> maybe he's not gotten addicted to it yet. So maybe it's no weed. Maybe, maybe it's maybe something else. Maybe it's something else, like a paper. Yeah. Really? Yes. <laughs> you see, and the whole conception about drug addiction and the fact that even if you need help and you go to the psychiatry or you go see a health professional, the whole uh, stigma yeah, of the, you uh, being tagged mad is also one thing that is drawing people away from seeking professional help. Mm. Because the moment you see me go to, let's say, Pantan, to go visit a, a doctor, 
the idea is ah or boredom, and it, it even goes to the extent of people who are depressed. Mm. You can't see a professional. I was going you, to you, go into the depression <laughs> bit because we are hearing again. Most creatives are saying we get depressed. Yes, a lot of them. Most most a lot of, of them. I got depressed at a point. Why? What got you depressed? Yeah, I was tired. Better? I was tired. I was. I had not developed the wisdom to manage my expectations well as I am growing, mm -hmm. because the average youth age for Ghana is between maybe 18 to 27 mm -hmm. or something. And these are the people on Twitter promoting the music, buying, sharing. And once you are 40 and going up, they can't identify with your music. Olu. Yes. <laughs> and therefore, you are losing your market share. Mm -hmm. So when I started losing my market share, I didn't deal with it properly. And somebody else could have uh, resorted to becoming a sex addict for the same, to fulfill the emptiness, mm -hmm. or becoming a drug addict to fulfill the emptiness. But I let it beat me up okay. to the point that I became depressed. Wow. Yes, and when I became depressed, then the doctors gave me medication. So they gave me So it was an antidepressant? Yeah, they, not yet. They okay. gave me medication for BP, which is sort of right. antidepressant. Because, oh, you're mm -hmm. mm. you are thinking all the time, your heart is beating, and then that will, is also affecting your lipid levels, mm. and then causing insulin resistance, which is now about to make you fat, yeah. and that will, if you are not careful, it will take you to a type mm. 2 diabetes, mm -hmm. and the whole cycle will, will begin. Therefore, they need to stop the bad cholesterol and stop the, the BP. Mm -hmm. And so they, I, I was on crystal and I made them five. One for cholesterol, one for BP. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yes. So how did you deal with it finally? I let it beat me up. So I sat down quietly for one year. Quietly. I didn't make any music. I didn't go anywhere. I didn't pick my phone calls. I took my phone away for one year because the phone addiction mm -hmm. was also a part of mm -hmm. it. Because that is what I'm saying. Ah, I posted this video. How many people watched it? Ah, why is it that mm. I don't have one million people watching this yeah. small, small video? Of yeah. All those things, you know, all that type of addiction. To be addicted to external dopamine mm. of how people are receiving your art. You know, so I threw it away. I stopped everything. And then I sat down quietly and I went into meditation. I went into a meditative state. And it was after I had come into a meditative state that I'm able to now, in retrospect, look at all the things that happened to me and to be able to speak like this. Mm -hmm. wow. So it was immediately after that, I made a Made in Ghana album. Wow. wow. Yes. That's how I dealt with it. Have you ever spoken about this? I shared, yes, uh, on his, on his program, yes. Mm. I've, I've shared it on his program. And, uh, but we have not gone into the details of yeah. what the depression is. See, mm -hmm. if you close your eyes and sit down for 10 seconds and you don't see anything, immediately all the problems you have in life will come up into your brain. Mm. Oh, just if you like, keep quiet for 20 seconds. Mm. Yes, every problem. That is why people are always trying to watch a movie, always trying to read a book, trying to talk to somebody, trying to have sex, trying to drink alcohol, trying to smoke yeah. something to divert yeah. your brain yeah. from dealing with your current, because your brain is so smart that it's always trying to solve your problem. Mm -hmm. So immediately you keep quiet, all your problems come, come up. up. And so if you are not strong enough to watch the thoughts, do what it must supposed to do to you, either through your conscience, punish you through your ego, you. Mm -hmm. You have not paid your child's school fees, it's been three months, shame on you. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. Yes. Yeah. It's true. You know? yeah. yeah. Either you have to sit down quietly for it to do that to you. Immediately you let it do that to you. It will tell you that, okay, then why don't this guy owes you? Why don't you go and take your money? Why don't you do this? Why don't you change your strategy? Why don't you now create content on YouTube since it pays more than this? So immediately you allow the thoughts to punish you for what you have not been able to do. It will immediately give you a solution. Mm. And that is the time that artists are not willing to sit down quietly for their thoughts to punish them. But immediately they feel the problems come up. They take a hit mm. and then all the problems will go away because they have numbed their pain receptors and the problem is waiting to swim back up. Immediately you gain consciousness. This is mm. really, really deep. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> I mean, I, 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 I think you should have been a psychologist. A psychologist. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> you know, he has played the, the role of a psychologist this this morning. Wow. Uh, Kwame, you know, there are different types of drugs out there, different types of alcohol. Again, I'll ask you this. When you have the conversation, which is the most common drug that most of them are taking? Most of them abused marijuana first, and then they upgraded to other things like cocaine and the rest. So they, they started with cigarettes, mm -hmm. marijuana, most of them, most of them. But I got to know through Dr. Hache that the most commonly abused drug is alcohol. Alcohol? Yes. Really? <laughs> <laughs> It is. Really? Yes. It's a drug. It's a drug? Yes, drug. it is. Alcohol mm. is a drug. <laughs> it is a drug. <laughs> I'm <so> <laughs> My dear, it goes, it goes into your bloodstream, immediately you take it. And then it affects your sugar levels. It confuses your organs. Then immediately, your brain is on it. All that I am high, I feel dizzy, I am fall, about to fall down. It's because your body... It has taken in something that it doesn't, it's unable to process it. You know, mm -hmm. between your left and right hemisphere, there's something here in your head that is like a fluid. If you take alcohol, all those sensory uh, things that are fi electrons firing, mm -hmm. all of those things become dull. As you are becoming dull, everything in your body becomes dull. Mm. And then you grow up, alcohol has been seen, to, I don't remember the percentage, mm -hmm. alcohol ha has been seen to be one of the things that causes type 3 diabetes, which is dementia and Alzheimer's in old age. It has been seen to cause type 2 diabetes mm -hmm. because it is the ethanol is uh, mm -hmm. sugar. It has been seen to cause type 2 diabetes because of the glucose levels. Mm -hmm. And then it lowers your inhibitions. Like um, my people will say, mm -hmm. it gets you to be able to do <laughs> things that ordinarily, once you have full awareness, you won't do. But then the society supports it, most religions support it, most traditions support it. And even this thing that I'm saying, I'm going to get into mm -hmm. trouble because business and corporations support it. Do you agree that celebrities should not promote mm -mm. alcohol? <laughs> Big question. I, I, I think that for that, particular, for that particular issue, the one that's in court, mm. I think that the FDA is just abusing the artist. Okay. And so, yes, I will not drink alcohol. But if you say that a celebrity cannot put uh, videos of himself holding Casa Preco in his music video, but however, you, put, you allow them to put billboards out. So if you are trying to hide the thing from the children, mm -hmm. by 7 a.m. when they are going to school, at the eye level, all these billboards are out. So what's really your point? Okay. That, that thing is a knee-jerk reaction. It's not a 360 okay. thing. If they really want mm -hmm. to hide alcohol from children, I don't think their focus should be on celebrities. Their focus should be on having an end-to-end -end strategy. So mm -hmm. for example, no billboard. However, a celebrity that wants to drink alcohol right. should drink it. Mm -hmm. After all, Paul said, well, because mm -hmm. of your stomach. Mm -hmm. I said, tell me that. However, all those content, all that type of content must be shown on TV from 9 p.m. till 12 when children are asleep. Okay. That would be a strategy that is really not hypocritical. And then access to the, the drink as well. Exactly. But then again, we are still fighting alcohol in creatives. We, we, we are fighting still, abuse in yeah. creatives. So um, maybe it's one of the methods to fight it. Maybe. To, to hide maybe. it. See, I mean, if you... No, to ban them from advertising. But if you ban them from advertising, yeah. I don't think they should ban... I think that they should ban them from advertising it in prime time and time that children watch TV and listen to radio. Okay. That one they should. So from the children? Yeah, because... But not from the creatives. Because once you ban something, you, you increase its value. <laughs> <laughs> this is the time that you're going to look for it to enjoy it the more because it's banned. Right. Yes, it must be available, but there must be education for someone to know that this is a cognac standing in front of me, but I'm not drinking it because I do not want type 2 diabetes. Mm. But again, I come to the whole alcohol bit for me. In Ghana, we hardly hear that, you know, the musicians are abusing alcohol. Funny enough, I don't know why. The creatives, let me use that word, yeah. are abusing alcohol. We'd rather hear of drugs. But then when you go abroad, you hear of the creatives abusing yeah. alcohol. I look at Amy Winehouse, who yeah. abused alcohol till she passed on. So. And so is it that here, um, the alcohol is taken in as a form of entertainment or fun? 
but not to really increase their energy level for performance? I think it's, it's the whole system. Because in Ghana, people see alcohol as normal because almost everybody can have access to it. Okay. That is the, the basic thing. If, let's say, a 12-year-old can go to a shop and buy alcohol, anybody can just have alcohol to buy. I, I don't see how... Ah, but can a 12-year-old buy alcohol in Ghana? Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Are you sure? Oh, yes. People uh, send look their up. children to go yes. buy alcohol for them. Yeah. It's allowed. Yeah. Yeah. You didn't know. No. They so don't. I think it's our rules of making sure that we regulate who has access to it. In Ghana, it's like a normal thing. So people don't really think alcohol is a drug, and that is why they think it's a normal drink. Mm -hmm. So if we are taking it from that angle, then if a celebrity is using or taking alcohol, we don't really see it as one of those hard drugs or harmful drugs, but it is. As we've but but don't they doctors. add on, you know, other drugs to, you know, increase the Some of them energy levels with other Some things? They do. Mm. Other things. And we all know the, the shisha, the nitrous oxide, balloon, balloon. Yeah, the balloon. Those, those ones as well. So there are other things that they do. Even with the weed, some of them add other things to it. Wow. Oh, yes. How are they yeah. able to afford these drugs, Oshami? I'm just yeah, I don't know if you have, I don't you know, know if you've have... realized Every time someone is introducing a drug to you, he gives it to you for free. It is only when you become an addict that you have to pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> Even alcohol, there's, a, there's a, top, a top older musician in Ghana, that's one of my mentors. Every time I go to him, he tries to give me a certain German mm -hmm. drink, drink, whiskey. <laughs> and then I try not to, so tell me, 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 <laughs> you know, so every time they give it to you for free, it is when you become addicted. And I can tell you that some of the people that find the ways of introducing tramor, these pills into the backstage and things, they are peddlers. Mm. So there's the economic side of it mm -hmm. that we have not spoken about. Mm. Where do they come from? How did it end up at the backstage? For yeah. example, when I travel to go and do a performance in a Ghanaian community, no matter where I go, immediately I get to the hotel, the organizers of the show will bring one guy. He's the fixer. He's the one that will bring the girls. If you need weed, he's the one that what, will bring When you go have performance, they bring you girls? Every time. I'm not saying I take them. No, you don't take them, but I mean they, they offer. Bring them. They offer. They offer. So that, this guy will tell you, oh, so you are in Holland. Oh, here, weed is free. We can go to Bama and go and sit in any cafe and buy it. But if you are in a place like Germany where a state in America where immediately they come, the fixer will come and try to find out, and they know here. And they will fix you nice, whatever you need, whether it is legal or illegal. So the wow. whole concept of drug use to lower inhibitions it's an integral part of the whole performance culture. So mm. if we are talking about it, we are not just looking at the, the video. We need to move into policy from yeah. here. Yeah. We need to move into advocacy. Mm -hmm. We need to move into teaching young musicians about, about self-love. Mm. And then let's get this young man to love himself so much that when he wakes up for the first 30 minutes, he's either doing jumping jacks you know, to yeah. increase circulation. He's drinking water. Yeah. He's not eating after five. We need to teach them to fall in love with themselves so much that they are not spreading their semen everywhere a woman gives them yeah. vagina. You know, mm. and that is when alcohol can be available, mm -hmm. but only the people that might take it for medicinal purposes or that will use it. Because if you are falling in love with yourself so much, no matter what your manager is saying, you are not taking tramor mm -hmm. to go and take off your boxer shorts and show your penis on stage. Yeah. You know, when we were speaking earlier, we did yeah. mention Timothy Ben too, Majid Michelle. Michel. They are Christians now. They are pastors yeah, yeah. in a way. So one would say that probably the gospel industry, you don't have, you know, they, them, or what's the right word? You don't have any of them. 
getting into <laughs> drugs or alcohol. But, but Jesus' first miracle was standing water into wine. wine. <laughs> <laughs> but that's not alcoholic wine, wine, though. Wine. Wine. No, let's, let's go into the Bible and define, let's define, let's define wine. It's wine. The wine is an alcoholic drink. Uh, yeah, wine. Wine. I, I've not looked at the tree the version tree of it, yeah. but w- non-alcoholic wine just came up. Mm. The word wine means fermented the grapes. Grapes. Yeah, that's true. Therefore, if fermented it's fermented, grapes has a bit of alcohol. alcohol. Zero point zero one. So, so do we have, do we have uh, you know, these uh, Christians who are in the creative industry also do same, like the gospel musicians? Before I come to that, yeah. Noah King, the radio presenter, uh-huh. at a point went to the seminary. Even at the seminary, he was stealing collection money to go buy drugs, cocaine. Okay. Yes, he was a Christian. Nobody knew. What? He was an addict. Yes. So let me link that to the Christians. For some of us in this industry, mm-hmm. we, we mingle with the celebrities, the musicians. We know some of them who drink proper, some smoke. What's for musicians? We can't mention their name. We don't. Wow. Are you wild? <laughs> I, 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 I have a question for you. Are you wild? I'm wild. I have a question for you. In this whole Ghana we are, I want to believe that only about 5% of Ghanaians are African, they practice African traditional religion. Yeah. yeah. And then let's say another 10% will be Muslim or Islam, which alcohol or any form of intoxicant is haram, completely mm. banned. Yeah, for mm-hmm. them. Then the rest, 80% will be Christian. They claim to Are you Christian. saying that... All the drinks made by Guinness Ghana Club Wine yeah, Enum. are drunk. Wine Enum. Wine Enum. It is them. Wine Enum. Yeah, but you know, uh, my question had to do with the gospel musicians because yeah. as much they are creatives as well, they and are. sometimes they go on stage and sometimes they don't deliver. So probably they also get the same pressure that the circular musicians get or the circular creatives get, right? I think even those who are into gospel music, they know themselves. They know the people who are into drugs. They know. Wow. And, and if some of them can be bold to tell you, they will mention names to you. But you see, we shouldn't, we shouldn't look at it from religion. Both sides. Exactly. The, the whole idea of, of I want to be high, mm. usually 90% of the time, says that because I am low, mm. so I need something to be high. But that low feeling of low self-esteem, that now you need an intoxicant to up it a bit. It comes from the inner child. It usually comes from, from a childhood mm-hmm. that had a lot of suffering that has not been dealt with. Mm-hmm. So the, whether you are a Christian, you are a Muslim, you are an atheist or an African traditional, you practice African traditional religion, if you grow up feeling low, once you, you become an adult and you can afford something that will make you high, you will be high because the body... Nature, biology is always seeking balance. That is what it's seeking. So if I'm, on, I'm, I'm not fulfilled because people don't like my music anymore, but Tramor can give me that cloud nine feeling or sex can give me that cloud nine feeling. Mm. Why won't I go and be addicted to the sex or become addicted to it? Because after all, I am low. Wow, I mean, this conversation is, mm. is so educative mm. this morning. And uh, of, uh, the documentary, has it been launched yet? Yes, yes, it's yes. Been launched. It's on okay. YouTube. Join it's on YouTube. YouTube. Okay, yeah. we'll talk about it. I want us to take a quick break. And when we come back, we have more for you because we are not done with the conversation yet. Do stay. We'll be right back.
They started to call these guys out. But I, I'm not going to lie. I started this drugs around <laughs> at the year 19. I was a little kid. I was a little bit stubborn because Charlie, we better choose jot and your shoe, better we and your shoe. Right now, you need something strong. I don't worry. So far as my motive is to stop drugs, I don't want any drug conversation because right now, yeah, yeah, I'm it's, I'm trying to say no to it more than going to rehab. Or they should tight me. They don't want me. You understand? Say no to it. You have the money in your pocket. You say no. You won't buy it. That is real rehab. Dr. Julius Hatches says drugs impede the normal functioning of the brain. Um, the whole concept or the whole idea of drug is that it has got a biological basis. Addiction now demonstrates a biological basis, making it clear that any time that anyone uses any of these drugs or substances of abuse, the brain itself gets affected. It halts the maturation of the brain. And to some extent, it even causes the brain's maturation to regress. So certain social skills. Anyway, we, we are still here. And of course, even though we went on a break, we still had to continue with the conversation. So sometimes you wish you wouldn't go on a break. So that, you, you know, this conversation will continue. But we just the, had The real to, show is... The, the real off, show is off air. Off camera. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there was an interesting topic that popped up when we went on a break. Sex addiction is another big one in the creative space. It's like everybody who is creative has to be sleeping with, you know, how many girls and all of that. The girls are sleeping with the guys for money the, because they are spreading them. The big men are coming. The guys are sleeping with the small, small girls. What is it? It is still the same trying to fill the emptiness. Any form of addiction comes from compulsion. So a state, you know that the uh, religious people will not understand or will not agree with me. Human beings are evolving. Mm. Some people say we are evolving from primates, whatever. But I see that I am evolving. And because I'm evolving, I have two personalities. So I have two persons in me. That what the Christians call the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. and my regular foolish spirit. Or what the Buddhists call the Atman and your regular self. You know, your Atman is what the psychologists call your authentic self. Mm -hmm. So everybody has an authentic self. And that self... Is, is sort of attached to your conscience, which is your continuous science. That is telling you this is good, this is not good, this is good, this is... You can, through actions or inactions, delete that conscience from your system. And once you have deleted that conscience from your system, whatever it is that you must do for this body mm -hmm. to be happy, what are they? Consumption, alcohol, sex, gossip, all those things that are of very low vibration, they are the things of the ego that your, this body wants. So if you delete your conscience mm -hmm. through an action or inaction or over repetition or a, through a habit, it gets to a point that your body now tells your brain what to do. Right. And as your body is telling your brain what to do, all that this body wants is recognition, mm. reputation, mm. orgasms. Uh, uh, what, the orgasm actually gives them some sort of acceptance? Yes, it tells you that if you are able to, if I'm able to have sex with women at your stage, as beautiful as you are with all this, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> if, if I'm able to have maybe once a month, no matter how low I feel inside, I think that, oh, if Rosalind will have sex with me, then maybe I am somebody. Mm. And that is why a lot of our big men who are in their 60s, are still coming down to look for 20-year-old beautiful girls to have sex with. It is all for social validation. Self-actualization. Wow. Yes! <laughs> Self-actualization. You know, um, I, I think Maurice Babyface shared his experience as well. Yeah. He was at yeah, the yeah. and he was what? In the past. In the past? Yes. Sleeping with how many girls in a day? About, about four or so in a yes. day. Yeah. In, a in, day. A, in a day. Yes. Yeah. He came out to, to talk about this a few years ago. And, and, but now he's no longer into yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. He's not I a mean, pastor. He used to, so. yeah. That's it's past. Uh, so I remember when this issue came up, people were mentioning names of artists he had worked with at Wake at Home. And therefore, Wake at Home. Nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> nonsense. <laughs> because he mentioned, some, he mentioned that he even slept with some of the artists he worked with. 
God have mercy. You see, so I think when it comes to addiction, it's in various forms, apart from yeah. the drug addiction, yeah. sex addiction is part of it, and other things. Mm -hmm. Other things. I wish mm. we had all time or all day to talk about this because the conversation... And food addiction. Gotten, food addiction. Mm. <laughs> That's what, food addiction. That is what's causing all the obesity <laughs> we have in this country. What, what else? That's what I'm saying. It is consumption. Yeah. Consumption. That is what we need to watch. Con what do we consume on the social media? <laughs> I wish what we had all day. We consume? I, I, I mean, there was something that you said. I mean, you, before Which one was I, that? <laughs> <laughs> Time. <laughs> Mommy, please, where can we find it on social media? It's on YouTube, Joy okay. News channel, yeah. Okay. Just go check it out. Okay, please go check it out. And uh, Ochami, you said to be able to come out of it, you need what? Prayers? Yes, you need, you need, when you come to me, yeah. Mm -hmm. See, Lord, I've known Lord Kenya all my life. We've been friends since 1988. Mm. Yes. Wow. And Lord Kenya and I were in the same class. So wow. I have known that he was taking drugs, drinking alcohol, and also smoking. Wow. But one day he woke up and said Jesus Christ arrested him mm. and said that if he doesn't stop that and go on a campaign to reverse all the people he has influenced, he will ask for their blood from him. And this guy didn't get one redrawal symptom. He didn't go to any doctor. Wow. So I... prayer to me. But if you, are, you, you have these compulsions, Please, see a professional. professional. See a professional and yes. add prayers to it. Yeah. Thank you so much for watching Prime Morning today. I wish we could go on and on, but we can't. My name is Rosalie we'll Valley, we'll and thank you so much for coming here. We'll do a party with an interesting oh, conversation. An interesting <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye.